Hey, Daniel here. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about how a lot of music that has been written over the ages has been written incorrectly for the singer. video I spoke about whether we were to breathe in through our mouth, nose, or through both. And if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that video because it is directly related to this video today. So let's dive in. First, let me put my guitar away. Well, I'm really glad you're here. There's something that I wanted to talk about. When I entered the conservatory, boy, did I have a wake-up call. What do I mean by that? Well, I was singing rock. So kind of, you know, a lot of original music, Beatles-type music, you know, a lot of harmonies, hall and notes, things like that. But when I got to the conservatory, now all of a sudden, I was just doing opera. When I began listening to these opera singers, especially Enrico Caruso, I was amazed at how that guy could hold out a note which seemed like forever. Because of that, I needed to know how the Italians taught, what was that secret thing that they had about the breathing. So needless to say, that put me on a long journey of reading. Now the Italians were, you might have heard, they were a little secretive about what they were teaching. Well, and rightfully so, you don't want to give away all your secrets, right? But what I realized over the years of reading was I was able to piece it together. Yeah, it took a lot of reading, literally a lot of reading, thousands of hours thousands of hours of reading. But then as I was reading and then trying to apply what I was reading and then what I was being taught, boy, I was running into a lot of problems. Here's what I mean. I'd be singing a piece of music. I would have to take a breath somewhere in the middle of a line. And we're gonna, we're gonna cover this for a second. The issue there was is I was always trying to catch up. And when I took a breath there, I never had enough breath to take in to be able to finish the rest of the next line that was coming. And if the next line was as equally as long as the line I just sang, and I didn't really have any time to breathe, boy, that was a problem. So of course, I struggled with that for a number of years until I started developing my breathing technique, which of course is a direct route from the Italian method of the art of breathing. So I said in the beginning of the video that over the centuries, a lot of the music that has been written has been written incorrectly for singers. Here's what I mean. Sometimes we have to take a breath in a middle of a measure. I worked with a lot of pianists and I was always felt like I was held in bondage to their playing. And it seemed like we just couldn't connect with where do I take a breath, this, that, whatever. Well, here's what I realized over the years. Most of the music that has been written for singers has been written incorrectly. Is that bold to say? Yes, it is, but here I'm gonna prove my point. So we're gonna take a look at Amazing Grace. Just as a very simple public domain song that we can take a look at for a moment. And I'm going to share with you something very powerful that once you grab this, it will change the way you look at music forever. So I'll be putting up Amazing Grace on the screen now. So as you're looking at this music, you see Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Now, the choice is going to be whether do you take a breath after grace or do you take a breath after sound? Or for some or for many, they take a breath after grace and after sound. What I wanna show you is this. Let's say I have to take a breath after grace, right? So I'm singing, Amazing grace, how sweet, right? So there's a problem though there. First off, my eyes do not see that I have to take a breath there, right? So this is one of the struggles that I always had. My eyes don't see that. So my eyes, aren't, my brain's not telling me that I have to take a breath there unless I know I have to take a breath there. I know it sounds almost contradictory, but ho hold on and listen up with me. Here's the thing. If I were to say to a mathematician and I said to them, hey, I want to put in a, a breath between grace and how, can I do that there? Now, I know you're probably thinking, why would I go to a mathematician and not maybe a conductor? Because I'm, I'll show you why. Because <laughs> I've worked with a lot of conductors and they never mentioned anything of this to me. Okay, so here's what I mean. They would say, the mathematician would look at that and go, no, you can't take a breath between grace and how. Oh, so then I'll take it between sound and that. And the mathematician will look at it and go, no, you can't take a breath there either. Well, why not? Because all of the time value has been taken up in those measures. Oh, whoa, right. That's why I'm having so much trouble singing a song. This is way back when. Are you getting this? So in other words, 
I can't take a breath between Grace and Hal because there's no more time allotted there. All of the value, the three beats per measure, which is three, four time there, all of the beats, all of the time value has been taken up. So now what was happening was I would always take what's called the hiccup breath. Because I'd be like, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that, right? Because they, I was always told to go to the, as far as I could to the end of that, of those two beats, right? On grace or sound. But then I realized, you know what? No, here's what that creates is faulty breathing. Here's what I mean. If I have to take a hiccup breath every time I go to take a breath right before the next word, that's training me to be an awful breather in singing. I don't want that. Technically, I don't need to take a breath until after sound. And if I do, here's what I'm going to do. But let's just go back for a minute and say you have to take a breath after grace. So what you do is this. That is actually written incorrectly for the vocal line. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you can't, imp you cannot insert any more value of time in there on be between grace and how. There's no more time value left. So what do I have to do? I've got to subtract the time value of, of the notes on grace. So instead of that being what's called a half note, which is two beats per note, and even if you don't even read music, we're going to cover in a minute how you can tackle that. On the word grace, there's two beats there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten it up. I'm going to actually make that into a dotted quarter note and put in a little eighth rest in there for me to be able to breathe. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it right now and, and I'll show you. So now this is what I did. I made those, that half note into a dotted and then I put in the eighth rest. That eighth rest is my breath mark. I, do, I can't do this, which is what I see in music all the time. I can't do that between sound and that. I can't do that. Why? There's not enough time value left to insert anything else, right? See what I'm saying? So that to me is problematic as a singer, okay? Which tells me maybe the composer wasn't really a singer, just had very good melody and writing, songwriting ability, which is fine. A lot of singers can't write music. A lot of writers can't sing and that's okay. So it's the responsibility of us, the singer to say, no, 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 to the piano player. No, 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 I'm, I just rewrote that. That's what I'm singing. So don't expect me to be able to sing to the end of the second beat to be able to get a hiccup breath to then sing the third beat, right? Which would be how, or in this case, that. That, that would give me a problem in singing and it will continue destroying my breathing technique. I don't want that. What I'm sharing here is powerful. Now, mind you, this is based upon whether or not you've got good breathing technique to begin with. And good breathing technique is this. They asked Lon Perti, who was a voice teacher in the 1800s, they asked him and said, how long should a singer be able to hold out a note once they have acquired good breathing technique? Not even great, just good. And he said, you ready? Up to 20 seconds or more. Whoa, yeah, that, I was like, wow, that's incredible. That's why breathing's so important. But if I have to keep fighting against trying to take a breath where there's no time value left to take a breath, I'm going to have the worst breathing technique there is. So as a singer, I said to myself, all the study that I did, I said, wait a minute, I'm just going to start subtracting the note before, which is what we did here on grace, right? So I did that on grace and now I'm going to do it on sound. And instead of putting in a breath mark, I don't need to. I'd rather use the notation that we are supposed to use. And there's the eighth rest. Does that make sense? So do you see how powerful that is? Which is why a lot of vocal music gives us the singer a real challenge to sing because we're trying to pack in a breath in an area that there's no time value left to do that. A rest is not a time to rest. A rest is a time to take the breath. So if I have an eighth note time of rest, that's what I want to take. I want to use that time. We spoke about that in our last video, whether we were to breathe in through mouth, nose, or through both. And I had said that I always breathe in through both. That is, that was the winner takes all. And it's very simple to do that. If you haven't seen that video, go back because it's going to be directly tied to what we're talking about today. So now putting that all together, now that you know, wow, if I feel like I'm <gasps> doing this, that's because you're trying to sing how you can't. Now, an instrument can play right through that. Much easier than a vocal line. Makes sense because you have to take a breath at some point. And if you have to take a breath, you got to take it where it's seamless. Having the eighth note rest will give us the time to take the breath that we need. We could even make that into a 16th note rest or a 16th rest, I should say right? A value of time. But with the 16th, that would begin to give you a little more of that hiccup, right? A lot of the times though, we, I myself included in the past, have taken a breath that was like a 32nd or a 64th note rest. 
And that's ridiculous, right? That's really creates the hiccup and that creates waste. And plus, guess what? When you take a breath that quick, you get nothing inside unless you already have a principle left over. That's getting a little more advanced. And if you're wondering a little more about what that is, you can check out my course called Breathing Mastery. But again, now, when you look at music, you're not gonna look at it the same anymore. Why? Because now when you look at music, you're gonna say, for those of you that read music, and now we're gonna cover in a minute those that don't, which is perfectly fine. You're gonna say, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, if I have to break in between and measure somewhere, I can't put a breath in there because there's no more time value to put a breath, right? So I gotta subtract from the note before, just a little bit, whether it be an eighth rest, and put in my eighth rest time in there. If it's quarter note, you would make that quarter note into an eighth note and then an eighth rest, and so forth. Okay, but what if I'm not, if I don't read music? That's okay, guess what? I didn't start reading music till I was 28 years old. Yeah, I had written hundreds of songs and didn't even know how to read music, right? For those of you that, that don't read music but have been able to write and write and write, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have an understanding on that and I commend you for that. In fact, I would rather go that route. I would rather not learn how to read music right away. I would rather just be able to just play what I hear in my mind and search for it and create the music that I'm hearing. And then when I've spent a good number of years developing that skill, right, what I hear inside of me, then I'll go and start reading music. For some, they like to go and read music. I'm on board with either one. But for me personally, for on the creative spectrum of things, I would rather just play by ear and just play what I hear and find it myself. Can it be a little more frustrating at times? Maybe, but eventually you get really good at it. And guess what? That's when you begin to find your true voice. You don't find your true voice in the sound that you make. I know, you hear that all the time. You find your true voice in the music that you make, <laughs> not in the sound that you make. Because the sound that you make is only going to be made by what your true voice is in the music that you create. Okay, but not to get too sidetracked. So now let's go, go on now. For those of you that don't read music, right? Well, I don't read music, I'll just look at lyrics. Okay, so you're looking at lyrics. Let's say I'm just looking at the lyrics of Amazing Grace and I'm doing Amazing Grace, how sweet. And I do that, right? Now I know that I just hiccuped. Right, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, you can hear, listen to a lot of music and start listening for the hiccup breaths. You'll notice that. Then what you do is don't imitate your favorite artist that might be doing that. What you do is you subtract a little bit before. So then you'll be amazing grace, how sweet. The transition is so much more prettier, right? Seamless. That's what we want. And guess what? When we do that, we're much more relaxed in our singing. We can develop and create tons of energy and sound from a very relaxed position. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you that don't read music, that's what you do. You start looking for the pattern where you're singing and all of a sudden you find yourself going, <laughs> right? Even when you start a song, you should never start a song by going, um, no way, you should be doing, um, see what I did there? That's how you should always be starting your songs. Even if you're playing, Right? If you start to do an intro, then guess what I do? By like, if I know I'm coming in in about two more measures, I'm, I'm already, I've already got a full load of air versus, uh, I got no air. Make sense? Okay. So for those of you who don't read music, listen to your pattern of what's going on in your breathing. That's going to really determine how you should approach that line. Right? Or if you were to do like, you know, baby hair with a woman's eyes. Now, I don't want to sing that too much because of copyright, but you see there in Sarah's smile, I actually didn't even take a breath. I would have taken a breath right after eyes. And that breath would have been seamless because I would have come off a little sooner to be able to have a nice replenishment for the next one. Replenishment. Yeah, well, again, if you want to know more about incredible this incredible foundation for breathing, you can check out my course, Breathing Mastery. I'm passionate about really delivering singers from this bondage of really faulty bad breathing habits in singing. You wanna be seamless. I wanted to be seamless. So today, after all these years that I've been spending doing this, I wanna share it with you. So again, when you're looking at music, don't think in terms, oh, I gotta take a breath here. Mm -mm -mm. Think about, if you read music, what time frames do you have going on in there? Do you have any more allotted time in there? Okay. And if you don't read music, again, you're thinking about how you're singing it. And if you find yourself cutting yourself short to take the breath really, like if you have to take a quick breath to get to the next line, shorten up the word a little bit before if you're holding it out. Make sense? That's all you need to do. That there is going to clean up your singing 
by a hundredfold. I can guarantee it if you apply it. And it's a discipline. You gotta be thinking about your lyrics, not just get up there and start singing it. Plan it, plan your singing. Don't just play it, plan it. Okay, that makes for a much better performance. I don't know about you, but when I see a singer hiccuping like crazy on stage, that is just like, for me, it's a distraction. Some people maybe don't care, but I do. And there are many of us that do care. We want our breath to be seamless. Plus that singer is gonna be wiped out by the end of that show maybe even by halfway through the show, depending on how many songs they have to tackle, he or she. So that in itself, when I see that, man, you need to get a hold of this breathing technique because when you get a hold of it, you won't be so winded on stage anymore. You'll have a lot more energy and more endurance for the stage and for the show that you're putting on. We looked at breathing in through mouth, nose, or through both, and breathing in through both is the winner takes all. Now you apply that to where you go to take, where you have to take a breath. Starting a song, See, I was already there, right? I was already seamless, right? You have to take it. Raising grace, how? Right, so mouth open, right? For those of you who haven't seen it, go back and see it because there's some very good things in there that we covered. And they're not tips. These are concrete techniques that will be forever. Besides, tips are very temporary. So now we apply breathing in through nose and mouth and releasing through nose and mouth. When we go to take a breath, we take the breath according to what the word is gonna be, whether if it's closed mouth or open. And if we have to take the breath and if we feel like we're gonna hiccup, well, we come off a little sooner on the one before and then we're able to make a better entry into the next word. This actually is powerful for choirs. For those of you that sing in groups, this will really define where the group actually takes a breath. I know a lot of times that's a big struggle. Where do we all take a breath? If you put a breath mark in there, that's not gonna work. Think about it. If you put in a value of time in there, so take away from the note before and put in an eighth rest visually as a group where you need to take that breath. Those of you that don't read music, you feel music. You feel where you need to make entrances and exits and so forth. You'll be able to feel together as a group where it is that you need to take that breath based upon taking away from the the note before the word before giving yourself a little bit of a leeway to get into the next one so guess what you are rhythmically timed into a song that's another thing being rhythmically set into the song that's a little more advanced that we can talk about at a later time. Again, my name is Daniel, and I really appreciate you staying here for a few minutes just thinking about what are these new things that we can do to make our songs even better. And for today, we learned don't just count on what you see in the music. You as a singer, you're going to have to make adjustments. Whether anyone likes it or not, you are not to sing to a piano player. You're not to sing to the guitarist, right? They're to follow you. They're there for you. You're there together as a band, great, but they're there to follow what you're doing. Over time, you'll be able to do it so naturally and in sync, it won't even be a thought anymore. Remember, take a look at your music, whether you read or don't, take a look at it. Take a look at the lyrics, take a look at the notes, chop away from the notes before to make a seamless entry into the next phrase that's coming up. The same thing would apply, look at the lyric. If you know you're gonna take a little bit of that hiccup breath, well then take away a little bit of time from that lyric before, leading you seamless into the next lyric. So I know when you take the time to look at this and apply it and stay with it, it is gonna transform your singing for the rest of your life. And I guarantee from this moment on, you'll never look at another piece of music the same ever again. I look forward to seeing you soon on the next one. Take care. And remember, keep singing and playing guitar.